after studying this module you shall be able to know about the functions of commodity markets, working of the commodity markets and benefits of the commodity markets to investors, producers of commodities and processors of commodities. Introduction Commodity exchanges around the world. The origins of commodity exchanges are typically traced back to the 17th century and the trading of rice futures in Osaka, Japan. The first formal and organized commodity exchange to be established in the United States was the Chicago Board of Trade in 1848 in response to the growth in agricultural production in the economy. Today the largest US exchange by volume is the Chicago Mercantile Exchange also known as the CME which was founded in 1898 as the Chicago Butter and Egg Board. Thereafter came the New York Mercantile Exchange which is NYMEX which is the world's largest commodity exchange now. During the same period the development of commodity exchanges were being given a great push by Britain's industrial revolution. Almost overnight the UK became an insatiable consumer of industrial metals. To ensure a more organized market structure the London Metal Exchange was established in 1877. The development of an international energy futures and market began only in the 1980s following the listing of the gas oil futures contract on the International Petroleum Exchange IPE in 1981. The sweet crude oil contract on the New York Mercantile Exchange in 1983 and the Brent crude futures in 1988. Today commodity markets exist throughout the world, in many cases the markets deal in specialized commodity. Notable among them are Chicago Board of Trade which is CBOT in USA, London Commodity Exchange in UK, Sydney Futures Exchange in Australia, Tokyo Commodity Exchange in Japan and Singapore International Monetary Futures Exchange in Singapore. Futures trading is a result of solution to a problem related to the maintenance of a year round supply of commodities or products that are seasonal as in the case of agricultural produce. The United States, Japan, United Kingdom, Brazil, Australia, Singapore are homes to leading commodity futures exchange in the world. There are at least a dozen major exchanges that serve as marketplace for commodities worldwide. Each of these specialize in certain commodities while others trade in whole different sets. Chicago Board of Trade which is CBOT. The first commodity exchange established in the world was the Chicago Board of Trade CBOT during 1848 by a group of Chicago merchants who were keen to establish a central market for trade. More than 50 different options and futures contracts are traded by over 3600 CBOT members through open outcry and e-trading. Presently the Chicago Board of Trade is one of the leading exchanges in the world for trading futures and options. Commodities traded on CBOT are corn, soya bean oil, soya bean meal, wheat, oats, ethanol, rough rice, gold and silver etc. Chicago Mercantile Exchange or CME is the largest futures exchange in the US and the largest futures clearing house in the world for futures and options trading. Formed in 1898 primarily to trade in agricultural commodities, the CME introduced the world's first financial futures more than 30 years ago. Today it trades heavily in interest rate futures, stock indices and foreign exchange futures. Commodities traded on CME are buttermilk, Dimonium, phosphate, feeder cattle, frozen pork bellies, lean hogs, live cattle, non-fat dry milk, urea, urea ammonium nitrate etc. New York Mercantile Exchange The New York Mercantile Exchange Incorporated is the world's largest physical commodity futures exchange and the preeminent trading forum for energy and precious metal. Its two principal divisions are the New York Mercantile Exchange and Commodity Exchange Inc. COMEX which were once separate but are now merged with NYMEX began in the middle of the 19th century when businessmen began organizing market forums to make buying and selling of commodities easier. Commodities traded on New York Mercantile Exchange that is light, sweet, 
crude oil, natural gas, heating oil, gasoline, RBOB gasoline, electricity, propane, gold, silver, copper, aluminium, platinum, palladium, etc. London Metal Exchange. The London Metal Exchange is the world's premier non-ferrous metals market established for over 130 years and located in the heart of the city of London, the London Metal Exchange is the world's premier non-ferrous metals market. It offers futures and option contracts for aluminium, copper, nickel, tin, zinc and lead plus two regional aluminium alloy contracts. The trends established at LME are largely followed by other exchanges. The exchange provides a transparent forum for all trading activity and as a result helps to discover what the price of material will be months and years ahead. This helps the physical industry to plan forward in a world subject to often severe and rapid price movements. Such is the liquidity at the exchange that the price prices discovered at the LME are recognized and relied upon by industry throughout the world. Commodities traded at the LME are aluminium, copper, nickel, lead, tin, zinc, aluminium alloy, North American special aluminium alloy, NASAAC, polypropylene, linear low density, polyethylene, etc. Tokyo Commodity Exchange. TOCOM is a non-profit membership organization as defined under the Commodity Exchange Law that was passed in 1950 which regulates all commodities, futures and options trading in Japan. TOCOM or TOCOM was established on November 1st, 1984 when the Tokyo Textile Exchange, the Tokyo Rubber Exchange and the Tokyo Gold Exchange merged. TOCOM is regulated by the Ministry of Economy, Trade and Industry. Tokyo Commodity Exchange is the second largest commodity futures exchange in the world with trade in metals and energy contracts. It has made rapid advancement in commodity future globally since inception 20 years back. Commodities traded at TOCOM are aluminium, crude oil, gasoline, gold, kerosene, palladium, platinum, rubber and silver. Definition of a commodity. Commodity includes all kinds of good. FCRA defines goods as every kind of movable property other than actionable claims money and securities. Futures trading is organized in such goods or commodities are permitted by the central government. At present all goods and products of agriculture including plantation, mineral and fossil origin are allowed for futures trading under the auspices of the commodity exchange recognized under the FCRA. The national commodity exchanges have been recognized by the central government for organizing trading in all permissible commodities which include precious gold and silver and non-ferrous metals, cereals and pulses, ginned and unginned cotton, oil seeds, oils and oil cakes, raw jute and jute goods, sugar and gourd, potatoes and onions, coffee and tea, rubber and spices. The first is the spot trade in which one pays cash and carries away the good. The second is a futures trade when the commodity is paid and delivered in the future. A person deposits certain amount of say good X in a warehouse and gets a warehouse receipt which allows him to ask for physical delivery of the good from the warehouse anytime in the future. But someone trading in commodity futures markets need not necessarily possess such a receipt to strike a deal. So a person can buy or sell a commodity future on any commodity exchange based on the expectation of where the price will go. Futures have something called an expiry date by when the buyer or seller either closes which is squares off his accounts or gives oblique takes delivery of the commodity. The broker maintains an account of all dealing parties in which the daily profit or loss due to changes in the futures prices is recorded. Squaring off is done by taking an opposite contract so that net outstanding is nil. For commodity futures to work, the seller should be able to deposit the commodity at the warehouse nearest to him and collect the warehouse receipt. The buyer should be able to take physical delivery at the location of his choice on presenting the warehouse receipt. 
but at present in India very few warehouses provide delivery for specific commodities traded on futures exchange, working of the commodity market. Commodity futures contracts and the commodity exchanges organizing trading in such contracts are regulated by the government of India under the Forward Contract Regulation Act of 1952, FCRA or the Act and the rules framed there under. The nodal agency for such regulation is the Forward Markets Commission FMC situated at Mumbai which functions under the aegis of the Ministry of Consumer Affairs, Food and Public Dis Distribution of the Central Government. India being an agro based economy has markets for most of the agro based commodities. During the pre independence era, India also had a thriving futures market for commodities such as gold, silver, cotton, edible oils, etc. In the mid 60s, due to wars, natural calamities, and the consequent shortages, future trading in most commodities was banned by the Indian government. Who regulates the commodity market? Forward Market Commission FMC headquartered in Mumbai is a regulatory authority which is overseen by the Ministry of Consumer Affairs, Food and Public Distribution, Government of India. It is a statutory body set up in 1953 under the Forward Contracts Regulation Act of 1952. The act provides that the commission shall consist of not less than two but not exceeding four members appointed by the central government out of them being nominated by the central government to be the chairman thereof. The functions of the forward market commission are as follows to advise the central government in respect of the recognition or the withdrawal of recognition from any association or in respect of any other matter arising out of the administration of the forward contracts regulation act of 1952 to keep forward markets under observation and to take such action in relation to them as it may consider necessary in exercise of the powers assigned to it by or under the act. Recent scams in the trading of commodity markets have made the government decide that the FMC be merged with the SEBI for better delivery of its important function of regulatory body. Economic impact of commodity markets. The commodity market establishment all over the world had significant impact on the world economy through the 19th century. E-exchange became efficient spokesman for and innovators of improvement in transportation, warehousing and financing of commodities. This all helped in creating a ground for the development in all these areas resulting into expanded interstate and international trade. Commodity futures trading in India. In India we have a number of small regional exchanges for trading in different commodities and at the national level we have four commodity exchanges. The commodities are traded both in cash market and the future market. It is the future market that take the lead in commodity trading as compared to the cash market. India has a long history of commodity futures trading extending over 125 years. Still such trading was interrupted suddenly since the mid 70s in the fond hope of ushering an, in an elusive socialistic pattern of society. As the country embarked on economic liberalization and signed the GATT agreement in the early 90s, the government realized the need for futures trading to strengthen the competitiveness of Indian agriculture and the commodity trade and industry. Futures trading began to be permitted in several commodities and the ushering in of the 21st century saw the emergence of new national commodity exchanges with countrywide reach for trading in all, almost all primary commodities and their products. Following the absence of futures trading in commodities for nearly four decades, the new generation of commodity market functionaries, financial organizations, broking agencies and investors at large remaining unaware at present of the economic utility, the operational techniques and the financial advantages of such trading. Many of the exchanges like the Multi Commodity Exchange of India MCX therefore fill the need of launching this commodity future education series to provide valuable insights into the rationale for such trading and the trading practices and regulatory procedures prevailing at the exchange. 
for easy understanding and simplification of various issues and nuances involved in commodity futures trading, a convenient question answer approach is adopted. Other national level exchanges like the NCDEX and the IXC are also conducting such education programs. Important milestones in commodity futures trading in India. 1875, Bombay Cotton Trade Association, while there is a viewpoint that futures trading has existed in India for thousands of years, the first organized futures market was established only in 1875 by the cotton, Bombay Cotton Trade Association to trade in cotton contracts. This occurred soon after the establishment of trading in cotton futures in UK as Bombay was a very important hub for cotton trade in the British Empire. 1893, Bombay Cotton Exchange Limited, following widespread discontent amongst leading cotton mill owners and merchants over the functioning of the Bombay Cotton Trade Association, a separate entity by the name of Bombay Cotton Exchange Limited was constituted. Soon after the commencement of cotton futures, Futures trading in oil seeds started by the formation of Gujarat Vyapari Mandali, which was established in the year 1900 in Mumbai. It is currently known as the Bombay Commodity Exchange Limited or BCE. Futures trading in raw jute and jute goods began in Calcutta with the establishment of the Calcutta Hessian Exchange Limited in 1990. Later, East India Jute Association Limited was set up in 1927 for organizing futures trading in raw jute. The dark age of futures trading in India. The subject of futures trading was placed in the union list and Forward Contract Regulation Act 1952 was enacted. Futures trading in commodities, particularly cotton, oil seeds and bullion was at its peak during this period. However, following the scarcity in various commodity, Futures trading in most commodities were again prohibited in the mid 60s. There was a time when trading was permitted only in two minor commodities that is pepper and turmeric. By 1996 there was almost a complete ban on futures trading. The government of India during the period 1950 to 1993 constituted many expert committees to study the various aspects of futures trading. These were the Shroff Committee, the Danswala Committee, the Khusro Committee, the Kabra Committee. The reports of these committees helped to lay down the framework for the revival of futures trading in commodities in India. In the early 1990s, the forex crisis and liberalization of the economy led to policy changes in India. This led to the reintroduction of futures trading in commodities with a view to protect farmers, traders and exporters from price fluctuations of commodities and to serve as an efficient price discovery mechanism. Government of India took the landmark decision in April 1999 to remove all the commodities from the restrictive list for futures trading. Government also allowed setting up of new, modern, demutualized, nationwide multi-commodity exchange with investment support from public and private institutions. National Multi Commodity Exchange of India Limited NMCE was the first such exchange to be granted permanent recognition by the government. Multi Commodity Exchange of India MCX was also established in November 2003 and presently is a leading exchange for bullion and energy sectors. National Commodity and Derivative Exchange Limited NCDEX commenced operations in December 2003 and currently facilitates trading in 57 commodities. The establishment of exchange accredited warehouse which issue warehouse receipts which can be traded added impetuous to the growth of futures trading, introduction of script less trading in de-mat or dematerialized form in capital markets paved the way for introduction of DMAT holdings of commodities with a large concentration of agro-based commodities. Benefits of trading in commodities. A future trading performs two important functions of price discovery and price risk management with reference to the given commodity. It is therefore useful to all the segments of the economy and particularly to all the constituents of the commodity market system. Benefits to the consumer and user. 
it is useful for the consumer because he gets an idea of the price at which the commodity would be available at a future point of time. He can do proper costing and also cover his purchases by making forward contracts. Predictable pricing and transparency is an added advantage. Hedging their risk if they are using some of the commodities as their raw materials in particular can benefit corporate entities. They can hedge the risk even if the commodity traded does not meet their requirements of exact quality, oblique technical specification. Futures trading is very useful to the exporters as it provides an advanced implication of the price likely to prevail and thereby help the exporter in quoting a realistic price and thereby secure export contract in a competitive market. Benefits to investors. High financial leverage is possible in commodity markets. In case of stock, an investor needs to put up the full amount of stock value to buy the stock. With commodities, you control commodity futures contracts with a margin, which is usually between 5 to 10 percent of the value of the commodity. Investor can effectively hedge the risk in price fluctuations of a commodity. Investor can also hedge his risk on investment in stocks and debt markets since commodities provide a choice and provide one more alternative avenue in the investment portfolio. It may be mentioned here that the commodities are less volatile compared to equity markets, though more volatile as compared to government securities. Commodity markets are extremely transparent in the sense that the manipulation of price of a commodity is extremely difficult. Given the knowledge of the commodity, the investor can be thus clear about what he can expect in the foreseeable future. Business involves just you and the market. With the rapid spread of derivative trading in commodities, this route has become an option for high net worth and savvy investors to consider in their overall asset allocation. The fact that stock indices and com commodity indices are not correlated implies that the commodity markets can be used as an effective diversification tool where investors can park their money. Benefits to producers. It is useful to the producer because he can get an idea of the price likely to prevail at a future point of time and therefore can decide between various competing commodities. The best that suits him. Farmers, for instance, can get assured prices, decide on the crop that they want to take and since there is transparency in prices, he can decide when and where to sell. Benefits to the economy. As the constituents of the commodity market system get benefited, Indian economy in turn is also expected to gain a loss. Growth in the commodity market implies that there could be a tremendous benefit to the Indian economy in terms of business generation and employment opportunities participants in commodity derivative markets. Speculator, a person who takes trades in commodities with a higher than average risk in return for a higher than average profit potential. Speculators take large risks, especially with respect to anticipating movement in the hope of making quick large gains. Brokerage houses, retail investors, people involved in commodity spot trading. Arbitrageur, since the cash and futures price tend to move in the same direction as they both react to the same supply demand factors, the difference between the underlying price and futures price is called as basis. Basis is more stable and predictable than the movement of the prices of the underlying or the futures price. Thus, arbitrator would predict the basis and accordingly take positions in the cash and futures market. Arbitrators are brokerage houses, people trading in commodity spot market or warehousing companies. Hedger. Hedging is buying and selling futures contract to offset the risks of changing underlying market prices. Thus, it helps in reducing the risk associated with exposures in underlying market by taking a counter position in the futures market. For example, the hedgers who either have security or plan to have a commodity is concerned about the movement in the price of the underlying before they buy or sell the commodity. Typically, he would take a short position in the futures market as the cash and futures prices tend to move in the same direction as they both react to the same supply demand factors. Hedgers are producers or farmers, consumers, 
like refinery, food processing companies, etc. Commodity futures market the economic perspective. Authentic price discovery and an efficient price risk management are the primary objectives for any future exchange. The beneficiaries include not only those who trade in the commodities being offered in the exchange, but also those who have nothing to do with futures trading. It is due to the price discovery and risk management through the existence of the future exchanges that a lot of businesses and services are able to function smoothly. Credit accessibility. The absence of proper risk management tools would attract the marketing and processing of commodities to high risk exposure, making it a risky business activity to fund. Even a small moment in prices can eat up a huge proportion of capital owned by traders, at times making it virtually impossible to pay back the loan. There is high degree of reluctance among banks to fund commodity traders, especially those who do not manage price risk. If in case they do, the interest rate is likely to be high and the terms and conditions very stringent. This possesses a huge obstacle in the smooth functioning and competition of the commodity market. Hedging, which is possible through futures market, would cut down the discount rate in commodity lending. Improved product quality, the existence of warehouses for facilitating delivery with grading facilities along with other delivery related benefits provide a very strong reason to upgrade and enhance the quality of the commodity to a grade that is acceptable by the exchange. It ensures uniform standardization of a commodity trade including the terms of quality standards. The quality certificates that are issued by the exchange certified warehouse have the potential to become the norm for physical trade by commercial banks. Regulatory Framework Forward Contracts Regulation Act of 1952, the Constitution of India brought the subject of stock exchanges and future market in the union list. As a result, the responsibility for regulation of commodity futures market devolved on the Government of India. The Commodity Exchange in India governed and regulated under the Forward Contracts Regulation Act of 1952 and rules framed thereunder. It provides for a three-tier regulatory system, namely Central Government, Forward Market Commission, an association recognized by the Government India on recommendation of Forward Market Commission. The Forward Contracts Regulation Act of 1952, FCR Act, provides for the regulation of commodity futures market in India and the Forward Markets Commission, FMC, the Commodity Futures Market Regulator is a statutory body set up in 1953 under the provisions of the FCR Act before the promulgation of the Forward Contract Regulation Amendment Ordinance of 2008. FMC did not have regulatory powers and authority like the SEBI or the Security and Exchange Board of India. It also did not have the financial autonomy as it depended on budgetary allocation and its administrative autonomy, was also restricted as it was subject to rules and regulations of the government in all matters including recruitment of staff. Forward Market Commission. Forward Market Commission is under Ministry of Consumer Affairs, Food and Public Distribution Government of India. It is a statutory body set up in 1953 under the Forward Contracts Regulation Act, FCRA 1952. It is the regulatory authority for all commodity futures exchanges in India. Summary. In this module, we have studied commodity includes all kinds of goods. FCRA or FICRA defines good as every kind of movable property other than actionable claims, money and security. Futures trading is organized in such goods or commodities as are permitted by the central government. Commodity markets are regulated by Forward Markets Commission, FMC, headquartered in Mumbai, is a regulatory authority which is overseen by the Ministry of Consumer Affairs, Food and Public Distribution, Government of India. It is a statutory body set up in 1953 under the Forward Contracts Regulation Act of 1952. The Act provides that the Commission shall consist of not less than two 
but not exceeding four members appointed by the central government out of them being nominated by the central government to be the chairman thereof. We have also looked at the glimpse of how commodity future trading started in India and how it has benefited various sections of society like consumers, producers, investors and the economy as a whole. 